What is going on, everybody? Today we are finally going to do the final review and full review of the Cold Steel Obion. In the unboxing of the video, got a lot of comments about the, the liner lock of this knife. Um, it's understandable that there'd be a lot of backlash on the Obion because of it having a liner lock instead of the triad lock. And, you know, it's total, so it's totally understandable that guys would have some, some beef about be, there being a liner lock now this knife here in this handle configuration has been out in other knives before the 1911 which was a standard clip point blade came out in something like 2017 um i don't know much about that about it when it came out and that it also had a blade configuration before that lynn thompson and andrew demko have been working on this flipper style uh, liner lock knife design for quite some time um, my disgust really in disappointment with this knife is not the liner lock it's actually more the blade the, the original pictures that they showed of this blade originally was a lot taller and thicker at this end really in general giving it more of the cold steel recon very aggressive high tanto tip and then of course when this came out we didn't know so when we or like when i ordered it didn't realize how short it actually is in height here it looked like it was going to be a lot bigger and they could have fit it in there too if you look at how far down that blade actually sits in there they could have definitely gone taller they did not need to um, chop down so much of the blade i don't know if the limited edition version of it will have changes such as that i will not going to count on it i imagine it's just going to be the uh, aluminum and g10 and in the uh, s35 vn i think it is that was what the blade steel is that it's going to come out and that's pretty much going to be the only difference between them but anyway if we look at perfect let's do some comparisons here so here's the civivi and another civivi here so if you look at these civivis you're going to see that not a whole lot of difference it's kind of hard to pick up that liner being black on it but you can tell that for the most part that these liners are the same thickness and Civivi doesn't have any problems at all with their line of locks. And I will say that this lock here on the cold steel is especially stiff compared to like the Civivi brazen. It's pretty easy to kind of slide that lock out of spot. It locks up, don't get me wrong, but you can it slide it over. This is actually quite stiff. You can see how the liner on it's hard to pick up you can see how long that liner is actually split down inside the handle on the Civivi the cold steel actually is not split down very much so you it's like a short throw is what it really is and so it makes it really stiff then this of course this lock here which prevents you can see it somewhat in there it prevents the liner from coming off the blade and keeping it at a pretty secure 25 percent and yeah you cannot budge it it's so it's pretty secure it would take a lot to bend or tweak that out of place now i mean i can understand like i said this is no not certainly not a recon one by any stretch of the imagination and it's certainly not a triad lock by any imagination but size wise when you break it down to what it is which is just a friendly edc knife sitting at just a tad over yeah, about eight and a half inches long in a handle length of mm, about four and three quarters and let's see one inch right in the middle and just under one inch of blade right there and then it gets especially short 
about three quarters down at the end. So you're really just looking at a friendly EDC knife. Like I said, we compare it to the Sabibi Brazen. These two knives are similar in price, $57, and this was $67. So you're really looking at two of the very similar price knives in similar, similar EDC style liner lock knives. So they were both very close in quality, although I would probably give maybe a little more to the Savivi. Um, just again, this the disappointing aspect with this knife again is the blade. I mean, you compare to the Savivi, there's so much more blade to really have at there. But and I like the aggressive tontoness of the blade, but it could have been taller at the end. So let's give it a see where we're at here for actual blade stock thickness. Just under four millimeters and about a hundred and fifty thousandths. And it does carry that pretty far out to pretty far out to the tip too and quick weight and three and three quarters so just under four ounces in weight so not a bad knife on overall let's actually compare that real quick to in the weight to the Civivi Brazen yeah, CVV Brazen's got just a little lighter three at three and a half. So, but anyhow, so we've had this knife now for quite some time, flipped the heck out of it, just waiting to see if we could get it to fail. And, you know, it's still, it's on bearings. It runs very smooth once you get past that detent. There's a little detent up there. There you go. Once it's past that, it shuts beautifully, flips beautifully. Yeah, yeah, see, you can fail it. It's a little, it's a little on the hard side because it, it, with the pretty aggressive um, flipper tab and the detent is exceptionally stiff too. So, but yeah, so it, it does make it a little harder to fail. I have been able to fail it before. There, there it goes. That was a fail. So it will fail, but it's it's pretty tricky to do it flips really good and it's action overall is good it feels pretty good in the hand as you can see it fills up my medium sized hand and there's still some room there it's comfortable in all grips wasn't sure about the pocket club originally when i was seeing the pictures of it but it actually feels really good in the hand it doesn't present a hot spot at all so anyway, you know, I think Andrew Demko and Lynn Thompson did a good job with this knife. This knife was designed by them. It's, you know, even though it's under the new cold steel, this knife was, was set up and manufactured long before the sale of cold steel. This, so pretty much all the knives you're seeing right now that are coming out still right now were all ordered in manufactured under Lynn Thompson and not manufactured under anyone else than with the new company so but anyhow with that being said overall the knife is a very nice knife I think it's definitely worth the money um, I don't know about the limited edition one that one is just really I think boils down to the fact of whether you would like the idea of the last <laughs> real Tontos being made by Lynn Thompson and Andrew Demko and whether or not you kind of want that astagia, uh, so to speak, of having that knife. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that Andrew Demko is going about things on his own these days. He's he's ramped up production of his knives. His AD um, 20.5 is a perfect example of a Taiwan-made knife. So I don't think that he's really... If there's anything really between him and Cold Steel anymore, so all these decisions and thoughts that those Lynn and 
Andrew is still going to be with Cold Steel. I find it very difficult to believe, but to each his own. We will find out ultimately, but I think this is pretty much the end of the road for the two greats that basically made Cold Steel, and this is where we're at today. So we will see whether new Cold Steel takes the business. It's probably going to be a lot of revisiting old designs over and over and maybe sacrificing quality. We will soon find out. But anyway, that's it for today, guys. That is the full review of the Obium. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can catch me the next time we do a review. Have a great day. Bye.